Well, it's our treat here on Sports 5 to be in the company of one of the stars of English cricket right now, fresh, of course, from a series win over Sri Lanka. That's Owen Morgan. How are you? Very well, yeah. I had a busy day yesterday at Wimbledon, but, um, yeah, feeling fresh today and, and, yeah, feeling good. I saw you actually lauding it in the Royal Box with a few famous faces. What was that like? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, obviously fantastic to be invited to such a, a, a great occasion. Um, but I had a bit of problems in the, in the box. I had Diana, Diana Ross sitting in front of me in her big hair. I couldn't really see past it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was an unbelievable day and something I'll um, cherish for years to come. I noticed you sat behind her. Did you have a tap her on the shoulder, a quick chat? <laughs> I tapped her on the hair, but she <laughs> didn't, didn't feel it. But, um, no, it was fine. I mean, I had a, a great view of the tennis and obviously got to see Roger Federer, which was amazing. Um, I mean, what a, what a treat that was. Um, and... Yeah, it was just a phenomenal day. How many glasses of Pims then? Come on, confess. Just one, um, I'm afraid. I think you're lying. <laughs> right, maybe a jug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we were spoiled. The whole day we, we, we spent watching, obviously, the tennis, where, where we were sat outside, we overlooked eight different courts, and we were sat sit literally on top of the court watching, watching tennis all day. It was, it was brilliant. Yeah, and do you get lots of glossy invites now dropping on your doormat? Now you're... A famous cricketer? Not really, no. Um, I mean, that's the first one to come to come through the door and obviously jumped at the chance, um, having never been at Wimbledon. So, I mean, I get to go and watch a lot of sport because I'm a, I'm a massive sports fan. So, um, again, small treats like that do always, do always tickle my fancy. A young boy growing up in Dublin then, um, you could have played rugby or any of the Gaelic sports for that matter. Why on earth did you choose cricket? Yeah, well, I've I got involved in cricket when I was quite young. Um, my mum and dad were absolutely mad about cricket and, and always have been. Um, my dad played a hell of a lot and because I grew up in a big family, um, we all played together. Um, and I'm, that's basically how I got into it. Since then, it's, it's, it's obviously got a lot more serious. And, and from, from the, being a young teenager, I, mean, I moved across to England to, to obviously play for England and, and aspirations to play test match cricket. Um, and funnily enough, here I am now playing. Did any of your mates kind of go to you, what are you doing? Cricket, what is, how, what is it for a start? Yeah, every single one of them. But again, <laughs> having understood and, and, and understood the game for so long and, and, and sold my story to them, um, they, they totally understood. So you obviously then actually played for Ireland first with, with great distinction. Did your family not threaten to disown you when you said, actually, I'm, I'm over the water to play for them in white? the English? No, no, absolutely not. Um, I mean, since I was 12 and 13 years old, I, I, I had aspirations to play for England, um, and I've always said it. I can remember meeting with the, the, the Irish coach at the time, and meeting him with my dad as a, as a teenager, and saying, I want to play Test Match Cricket for England. And he was, he was baffled by it. This young kid who could, he could barely, I don't know, speak, he couldn't even hit fours or sixes, was saying he was going to play Test Match Cricket. So, I mean, it's, it's playing Test Match Cricket for England, is, is, I'm very proud of it. Um, and I hope so are the whole of my family. Yeah, OK. I know you're a rugby fan because you follow Saracens. So who on earth do you support then when, say, Ireland play England in the Six Nations Championship? You're a bit Jekyll and Hyde, a bit confused. A small bit, yeah, I am. I tend not to watch. I, I prefer listening to the radio most of the time and then just, then just hide away. But I had a funny one. Leinster played Saris in, in, at Wembley uh, recently in the, um, in the Heineken Cup and that was a bit of the same. I was actually sitting on the sideline, which was quite ironic and I wasn't supporting either side, so... Again, I'm a more a follower of sport um, than a fan of either side. But you've gone above and beyond the call of duty for the Fez Hats, haven't you? The old Saracens. Tell me, how did you drum up support for them? Um, a couple of years ago, I actually handed out leaflets in the middle of West Hampstead. Um, I believe it was right in the middle of the cricket season as well, so there was every chance we were playing one-day internationals. But um, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do anything I'll, if it's for a bit of a laugh and, and a good cause. <laughs> did you not get people going... Hang on a second, I could have sworn that guy with the kind of... Shall I, can I call your hair Auburn? <laughs> <laughs> or you can do it. <laughs> Are you called Ginga by anything, your teammates? I've been called everything, absolutely everything. <laughs> Are you not sure that people were going, hang on a second? No, maybe it wasn't, but it might have been. I, I tell you, I was more conscious of it, maybe a selector walking past and going, I'm sure I, I picked him for the game last <laughs> week or something. But no, I mean, it was a bit of fun and, and something I look back at. and I mean, it keeps you grounded, so yeah. It certainly does. Now, you've got a unique, it would be fair to say, style of batting. It's not always orthodox. Um, 
what is it about you that likes to mix it up a bit? Um, I, th I think I just like to get on with things. Um, I always have done. It's always been part of my game as batting. Um, I always like to be positive and, and score runs and entertain quite a lot. So, I mean, that's sort of element of my game that came in when, when 2020 first started. Um, it's, it's the essence of the game and the backbones of it. So I'm, from where it started to where I've gone now is, is, has been a long process and it's something I've worked very hard at. So Did it not drive your coaches, your teachers a bit mad when you started doing all these things at the crease? It did at the start because you make a hell of a lot of mistakes and they're going, what the hell are you doing? Um, but then when I trained a lot harder and became a bit successful, they were actually started becoming more understanding and seeing where I was, co I was coming from. So, I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of it was backed by a small bit of success. OK, there's a reverse, reverse sweep on YouTube, which has got about 150,000 odd people have, have watched it. Is that like a favourite shot? No, it's not. It's only ever happened once, and it was a bit of a mistake, to be honest. And everybody's banging on about it. But I mean, it's 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 a shot that I've I I, I practiced a hell of a lot, um, and it was the ball wasn't in that area, so I just tapped it in another area. So if it works, why have you only done it once? Because in that circumstance, it was the only time it's it's ever cropped up, and it just happened to be a TV game. Okay, so is there a shot you've got in your head that you've thought about and thought, I might try that, but so far you haven't because I, you might get out or look daft? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of shots I've played where I look daft, but I mean, <laughs> when I do them well, they look brilliant um, and they're very effective for me, so that's, that's why I play them. And the, there's, there's, there is a shot I'm working on which oh. will take a bit of practice and hopefully it'll come in quite soon. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit more? It's top secret. Again, yesterday, if you were at Wimbledon, you would ask me, I would have told you. But <laughs> Under the influence of that one <laughs> PIMS that you allegedly had at Wimbledon. Just mm. the one PIMS, yeah, definitely. OK, so are you writing it down in a secret diary somewhere, or is it just in your head? No, I'm just I'm practising it. I'm practising in the net all the time. It's, it's something that I think might come in useful, um, but it's not ready yet. Keep making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> keep giving your wicket away yeah, basically exactly exactly yeah oh I can't wait I want to kind of know now that's that's really nosy of me but anyway um have you seen the um the Dilshan scoop uh -huh. yeah I mean he literally lifts the ball over his head, his head and missing the wicket keeper as well for four runs yeah. I couldn't believe it when I saw it um you fancy trying that yeah, I've played it a couple of times um, and it has worked, but I've gone back to just standing still and trying to hit the ball out of the ground, um, <laughs> keeping it very basic instead of trying to get hit in the head. But I mean, I mean it's something that works for him. He's a fantastic cricketer um, and I'm sure we'll see it in this series. So do you like to be a bit of a clap crowd pleaser? Is that what's going on? or Really? Um, I, I tend to be more effective in, in the shots I play and the shots I play are just unorthodox more than anything else um, but they work for me um, it's not a matter of entertaining anybody it's just going out and, and doing what I do yeah. you've had this sort of meteoric rise I mean you set your stall out you wanted to play for England you left Ireland behind to do that are you just amazed in a way how quickly it's happened for you not just one day as 2020 but test cricket as well now yeah it has it has all happened very quickly especially like the the, the transformation from being a one-day international cricketer to be a test match cricketer i thought they weren't supposed to go cap in hand those two but you seem to be able to do it like easy yeah it's certainly not easy um again everything i've done up until this point has been working towards test match cricket it's just that I've played a hell of a lot of one day cricket before that so my progression has been far more in one day cricket um, but having like come back from winning the 2020 World Cup and then been thrown in to play a test match it did surprise me a bit um, but again relished the opportunity and absolutely loved it I made my debut at the home of cricket in front of all my family which was which was amazing and it didn't take long then to knock out 100 runs for England either as well did it yeah, well, I managed to get another opportunity later on in the season, um, and yeah, I got a hundred. It was it was unbelievable, proudest moment of my my career to date. Really, that that meant that much to you? Yeah, absolutely. They're hard to come by, very hard to come by, and you only get your first one once. So, yeah, loves it. So when Ireland beat England in the World Cup, <laughs> did you suddenly think, oh my goodness, I've made the wrong choice here? Actually, Irish cricket's got some backbone. Maybe I should have been sticking with them. No, absolutely not. <laughs> um, I stick by my decision. Uh, Ireland haven't played test cricket to date and I, I think it might be quite a while before they do. So, I mean, uh, I back my decision. I love playing cricket for England. Yeah, now I was a bit cheeky earlier about the colour of your hair. 
Have your teammates given you a bit of stick for that? Do you have a nickname amongst the England boys? I don't. It's very boring. We're a very boring change room. I don't believe that for one minute because I follow Graham Swan on Twitter for a start. The least boring man you could find. We've got players sticking bats through glass windows. <laughs> it is not a boring dressing room. Well, Discuss. Um, I'm not sure I can tell you anything. It's all very, yeah. Pims now, yeah. please, come. <laughs> no, I mean, a lot goes on. Um, and we have a lot of time in our hands. We talk a lot of rubbish. Um, and I don't remember half of it, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I thoroughly enjoy it. There's a great vibe in the change room at the moment. And looking forward to the series ahead and with great confidence. You once confessed on Twitter that actually you watched five Harry Potter movies in three days. You were that bored on tour, I think. I mean, is it true that the, the England team play darts to unwind on tour? Yeah, there's a lot of Call of Duty played on the Xbox. There's a lot of darts tr thrown. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of different things. You get, you get very bored in hotel rooms. Yeah, so who's like the most competitive at the hockey then? Um, I think Cookie. Cookie's, Cookie's pretty good. Um, the only one that can beat him, I think, is Jimmy. Um, I'm rubbish at that. I was about to ask that question. Absolutely terrible. I'm more of an Xbox, Xbox man. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. What else do you do to keep um, boredom well, at bay? Yeah, I, I do watch a lot of sport, a hell of a lot of sport, and I do like going and getting that live atmosphere vibe at, at different stadia. Um, I, I listen to a lot of music, go to different concerts. Um, so yeah, I keep myself busy. Yeah. And you can have a busy summer now as well, aren't you? It's only just started really for you, hasn't it? We've got the Indians to come later on in the year. England aiming to be the number one side in the world. Do you think that's uh, achievable? Yeah, I think it is. I think we've a, a great group of players who are on, on, at the top of their game. Um, with guys like Alistair Cook and Jonathan Trott, the, the form they've shown in the last six to eight months has been phenomenal. And if, if we continue to do what we, what we do well, um, there's no reason why we can't. And when will you be unveiling that shot that we can't discuss at this moment in time against the Indians? Maybe they would be the good team to test it out, I think. It wouldn't be a bad series to bring it out in, but as soon as I start nailing it, I'll start bringing it out then. <laughs> but until that, it's, it's, it's staying in the wardrobe. OK, good stuff. Thanks ever so much for talking to Sports Vibe. It's been good fun. Thank you very much.